Awesome Sauce Network's coverage of Computex 2016 has been overclocked by Gigabyte, Fantex, CableMod, and G-Skill, making the contents of this video highly unstable. Click the links in the description for more info. All right, guys, I'm now kicking it here at the G-Skill booth. They've got a ton of stuff to show off. There's a bunch of overclocking demos going on at the front. Beautiful women all around. But right now, I'm, my main focus is the peripherals. Right now, we're checking out their new KM770 RGB, which is kind of very similar to their earlier released KM780 RGB, which you guys are probably a little bit familiar with. Now, they've made some revisions to that keyboard to make the 770, which I actually think you guys are going to like. So first off, with the, uh, the 780, you had these, uh, these, these side plastic pieces here for a very gamery, aggressive aesthetic. And if you're not a fan of that, the 770 has actually done away with those sides entirely. So you can see it's just a really straight edge, makes it a lot more simplistic and minim minimalistic, and also just kind of shortens the, the overall footprint of your entire keyboard, which I really, really like. Also, the actual wrist rest has gotten a little bit flatter just to be a little bit more ergonomic. I did test it out briefly and it is super comfortable. And also, this is probably the biggest step up and win in my book is they actually in introduced RGB LEDs at the very top row of buttons. All the keys on the top are completely customizable now, whereas before they were locked into being red only. So uh, that was kind of a disappointment. So you're actually getting full across the board RGB with the exception of the volume adjustment right here. The, vo the volume LEDs are still going to be red. However, they're, they're in talks right now with a way to possibly disable that within the software, which I think would be a good move just so you don't have any clashing color schemes. This is the KM570MX and it's kind of a more basic mechanical gaming keyboard, but it still packs in a lot of features. So it does have uh, pretty much red LED backlighting on all the keys. You can actually do macros as well. It's got a very nice braided cable that is fixed to the actual unit. And it's going to be coming in at a very aggressive price point of just $99. $99.99. So $100 for a mechanical gaming keyboard is pretty solid, very competitively priced, and we're going to be expecting this around Q3 or Q4. So if you don't need all the fancy features like you know USB or audio pass-through, things like that, you're just looking for a really good gaming keyboard with Cherry MX mechanical switches that are going to be offered in red, blue, or brown, I believe, uh, then look no further than this particular keyboard from G-Skill. All right, now let's go to the power supplies. All right, so G-Skill is also showing off their new line of PS power supplies. These are the Ripjaws PS line of, of units. And we've actually got two different flavors here. So you've got a gold version, 80 plus gold, and 80 plus plat platinum. So for the gold, you're going to be getting capacities, wattage capacities, that is, of 750 or 850 watts, whereas with the platinum, you're getting 850, 1200, or 1250 watts. You can see right here, we've got two We've got the, uh, the 1250 and the 1200. The stickers look a little bit different because uh, we're dealing with different OEMs here, but essentially you're getting the same pretty much built-in quality that, uh, that comes with the Ripjaws line. Now, you, I really do like the new stickers on these particular sets of units because they're completely color neutral. Uh, you can see it's also got fully modular design, uh, regardless of whether you're getting the 1200 version, 850 watts, 750 watt, helps your system just stay really nice and tidy overall. These should be hitting the market very, very soon. Stay tuned for Q3 about and uh, these, th these things will be dropping right about then. We have a little bit more to talk about, which I believe is memory. G-Skill's known for their very fast memory, so let's go ahead and check that out now. And in this corner, we find the Trident Z series of memory from G-Skill. You guys are probably familiar with this line. Very sexy RAM, probably the sexiest heat spreaders that I've seen in a long time. And they've actually got different color configurations this time around. So you can see here, we're looking at some uh, black brushed aluminum with some orange accents. And uh, if you actually look at the front plates of, uh, of each of these little test beds that, that G-Skill has set up here. You can see that there's just a pl there's plenty of different memory configurations to choose from in terms of kit sizes, capacity speeds, cast latency, and things like that. So here we're rocking a 64 gig kit of DDR4. These are 16 gig DIMMs, and there, there are four of them here, 1.35 volts. And uh, this is running at 3200 megahertz with a cast latency of 13. So you're gonna be getting really good speeds. Low latency is always good for, uh, for any kind of gaming. Moving down the line here, we've got a 16 gig kit. These are eight gig sticks, and uh, there are two of them there there on a mini ITX board. Now this is running at 4133 megahertz with a cast latency of 1921, 2141. Uh, why this is interesting is because up until this point, 4133 megahertz has only been allowed or has only been uh, seen on eight gig dims. So now we're actually seeing 16 gigabyte modules being able to push this speed, which is pretty impressive. So here we're looking at uh, pretty much a familiar color scheme. This is what we saw with the last generation of Trident Z. Uh, however, we are rocking 16 gigs here. That's eight, eight gig sticks and there's two of them there running at 4,266 megahertz. Just blazingly fast for DDR4, and yeah, these, these things are fast. I'm just gonna keep saying how fast these RAMs are. These RAMs? These RAMs. Got that RAMs? ram a ram So here we have yet another 16 gigabyte kit, eight by two, running at 4,500 megahertz. I've been informed by G-Skill that this is the fastest kit that is on the Computex show floor here at the event in 2016, which is pretty impressive. 
And uh, if you actually look at the modules themselves, you can see that we're rocking kind of a black and yellow color scheme. The yellow is very nice and bright, vibrant, has a really rich color to it. I'm not sure if it's just the lighting at this booth, but uh, very nice to see that uh, G-Skill is playing around with the different color schemes for this uh, Trident Z series of RAM. Now here we've got a 64 gigabyte kit. These are 16 gig modules running at 3466 megahertz. And we've got a cast latency of 14, so very fast RAM all around. So this is kind of interesting. We've got a school trail nook here, a little mini PC all set up, rocking some SO dims. And these, these dims are actually overclocked to 3333 megahertz. At 1.35 volts, we've got 32 gigs of DDR4 in this little PC here with a cast latency of 16. Here we've got a 128 gigabyte kit. These are 16 gig modules. There's eight of them. Holy mother of God, 3300 megahertz, 1.35 volts once again. Cast latency of 16. And these are the sexy black and yellow dims. This is uh, rocking on an X99 test bed with a 6850K. We've got another 128 gigabyte kit. This one's at 3200 megahertz. DDR4, of course, 16 gigabyte modules. These are the kind of a dark gray and red color scheme. Cast latency of 14. How about them apples? Those aren't apples, Kyle, they're memories. memories. How about them memories? After seeing all those 128 gigabyte kits, who even cares about a measly 64 gig kit? No, actually, this is still pretty cool. These are eight gig modules. There's eight of them on an X99 testbed once again. 3600 megahertz, DDR4, cast latency of 16. Sorry, 15. I swear I can read. Another 64 gigabyte kit. 8x8, 3600 megahertz of DDR4, 1.35 volts, cast latency of 15 on a 6950X test bed, rocking that X99 love on an Asus Rampage 5 Edition 10 motherboard. Circling back to the 128 gigabyte kits here, 16 gig modules, again, eight of them, fully packed. They do an X99 test bed, rocking a 6800K. This is uh, running at 3466 megahertz, again, DDR4 at 1.35 volts, and a cast latency of 16. And our final kit of the day here at the G-Skill booth is uh, rocking on an MSI X99A Godlike Gaming Carbon Motherboard with a, a Core i7-6950X. And this is a 128 gigabyte kit, 16 gig modules, fully stacked, 300, or I'm sorry, 3,466 megahertz, running at 1.35 volts, DDR4, cast latency of 16. So sorry guys, I know that was a little bit exhaustive. There were a lot of kits to go over here, but I just wanted to show you the, uh, the range of options that uh, the G-Skill has here with their, their Trident Z memory. Pretty much for any kind of configuration or any capacity or speed that you might need, G-Skill has you covered. All right guys, over here we've got some gaming mice from G-Skill. Actually, it's just one particular model. It's the MX780. This is not yet released. We have no idea when it's gonna to come to market. And we've got a couple varieties here. We've got four different color schemes to choose from. And G-Skill's only gonna be bringing two of these to market. So right now what you can do if you wanna vote on which color scheme you like best, you can head over to G-Skill's Facebook page, cast your vote, and uh, two of these bad boys will be being brought to market sometime in the future. We've got a couple different varieties here. So the first flavor is kind of a black and red. You've got a uh, rubberized black on the outside with rubber, with uh, sorry, red accents on the inside. And you've also got uh, three white models. So we've got a white and black with uh, white on the outside, kind of more of a glossy finish and black on the inside. And then you've got white and blue and white and teal. So bear in mind, you guys get to choose two of these. Which ones do you like best? Regardless of which two are brought to market, they will all feature RGB LEDs that are going to be configurable in G-Skill software, which is pretty cool. All right, guys, so we're now on the other side of the G-Skill booth here. And as you can see behind me, they've got a lot of cool overclocking activities going on. They're doing like a show every half an hour or an hour or so. Uh, we actually have Kingpin, world famous overclocker. So Kingpin has a pretty epic setup right here. He's rocking the 6950X from Core i7, or from Intel, Core i7, the new 10 core chip. Also an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1080. And uh, he's also rocking, of course, some G-Skill memory, the Trident Z, very fast stuff. But on top of that, he's actually overclocking the hell out of his CPU and GPU using a pretty cool method of distributing LN2. So he's actually got his own contraption going on where he's got a cold pot on top of his CPU and video card and he's got these tubes running from a giant LN2 tank straight into those pots, and he's connected that to a little arcade cabinet system. It's like a Mortal Kombat arcade thing, and every time he presses like the punch or kick button, it actually opens up a power-controlled valve and allows some LN2 to spill into the cold pot. Now, what that does is, essentially makes overclocking with LN2 a lot simpler because you're just hitting the button instead of having to refill the pot every few seconds. And it's also going to save you up to 30% more LN2 in the long run. LN2 can actually get pretty expensive depending on where you get it from. Taiwan, it's dirt cheap. America, not so much. And in the UK, apparently, according to Kingpin, it costs an arm and a leg. So we're gonna have to find some underground black market LN2 dealers pretty soon. 
Uh, but that is pretty awesome. Also, on top of that, apart from just him doing it himself, his own contraption, he's trying to market this and bring it to a global audience potentially so that you could actually start overclocking with LN2 at your own home. Now, it's kind of difficult to uh, oh, God. stay focused when you have me. Ah, ah, ah. Catch me. Are Logan, we, everyone. What are we Logan. doing here? What are we doing? Well, I, think, uh, I think Kane's uh, indoor glasses is rubbing off on you. What the f***? What? That's my camera. Did she just kick it? Yeah. What'd she do? Jesus. Screw her. I just walked up from a f***ing camera, walked directly in front of the shot, and hand kicked my f***ing camera. Jesus. Was it on the ground? Or you should go, like, it was on the ground. But I mean, it's sticking out like that much. God damn. Ugh. <sighs> I hate people. That video clip went from 60 to zero in no time flat. <laughs> anyway, what I was trying to say before Logan so rudely interrupted me was that King Kingpin is actually thinking about bringing this LN2 contraption he's made to a market. So if you are interested in potentially LN2 overclocking at your home, you might be able to buy a more polished version. Granted, this is just something that he threw together in his garage, but maybe in the future, you're gonna be able to see this in a retail store or on an, in an online store, for example. We have no idea pricing or availability, availability or anything like that, but Kingpin is hard at work trying to make this more accessible for those of you who want to overclock with LN2 at home. And by the way, let me know in the comments, if something like this was brought to market and it was relatively affordable, would you consider overclocking on LN2? Let me know in the comments. Special thanks to G-Skill. They are one of my big sponsors here at Computex 2016, as well as Gigabyte, Fantex, and CableMod. CableMod, who by the way, is offering a 20% discount right now on all their selection. So go ahead and check out all the links in the description below. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into my coverage of Computex, and I'll see you guys next time.